All right, family, we back out here. It is day 28 of the 30 day challenge on how to improve your relationship by 3X. I am a girl, Marshawn Olanio, and we are out here today. Today's topic of discussion is taking responsibility. A lot of people out here, including sometimes myself, I must admit, we're out here and we're not taking responsibility of how we're showing up and who we are becoming and um, moving toward in our relationship. We're not taking responsibility, y'all. We're putting the blame on our spouses. We're putting the blame on everybody else and why we are showing up and becoming and showcasing who we are, this person that we don't necessarily like. And that's what happens when we don't like the person that we're showing up as being. We start to throw and toss blame here, toss blame there, toss blame there, and we never look inside that mirror case in point the mirror behind me we never look inside the mirror and look at ourselves and see how we are showing up what we are doing and how we are participating in our relationship it's really important to take responsibility for yourself while you're in your relationship because it is an important part of a healthy relationship Taking responsibility in your relationship creates trust. It also creates dependability um, from your spouse looking at you and how you are showing up, how you are reacting, how you are responding when they bring something to you, whether it's whether you seen whether you see it as it being innocent or not they are watching the way that you are responding and when you respond in a not so kind way in an ignorant way then guess what you have a tendency or i should say your spouse has a tendency to come at you in a not so kind way as well um taking responsibility demonstrates that you can become vulnerable why not become vulnerable when in this relationship that you claim to like with this person that you claim to love. Again, if you're not being vulnerable with your spouse, then who are you becoming vulnerable with? If it, this is the fly in here. <laughs> uh, because a lot of times when we're not taking responsibility is because we want to be right about something. It's because we want to prove our partners wrong. And really it's just because of the bad behavior that we have out here. And so because we have this bad behavior, we don't want to say that, you know what, baby, you were actually right about say it thing. We don't want to do that. And that really does show the immaturity portion of who you are. So if you want to be a lot more mature in your relationship and take your relationship to the next level, then you really need to start taking responsibility for who you are and how you are showing up in your relationship. It actually reminds each of us when we're taking responsibility. It reminds each of us that take responsibility, that we hold the power, that we actually control the role that we play within our relationship. I mean, because I, I can totally tell you about me anytime I'm not taking responsibility or I'm trying to put the blame on my spouse on why I did X, Y, and Z. That is the very time that it starts to go downhill, that things start to tank. Things are not going well. And then the conversation really just goes downhill. Because I want to be right. I don't want to take responsibility. I want to put the blame on. I mean, all of us do this. Have you ever done that before? Is it just me? I don't think it's just me out here. I know that it's not just me. Sometimes we just feel like we need to be a little bit childish. And so we put ourselves in these situations where we are not showing our maturity. But really, you have to become the leader in your relationship. Doesn't matter the sex that you are or not. You have to continue to be the leader in your relationship. And being the leader in your relationship shows up as you taking responsibility for your actions, for your words, taking responsibility for all of the things that you're spewing out there, that you're putting out there. Because as I said before, we can say that words do not hurt one another, but they totally do. We always say that sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. That, no, that's actually a lie. Words can cut you to the core. 
Words can make you go out there and do some things that you didn't even think that you were capable of doing. All because you want to get even some type of revenge or you just want to be like, mm, nah, I'm just, I'm just going to do what I need to do. I'm going to do what I feel like doing. I'm not going to be respectful. In the end, you're really not being respectful to yourself. But we think when we do that, we're actually not being respectful to our spouses, to our partners. And then we have to worry about the consequences that come from all of that. And so we have to learn to take responsibility in our relationships. When we start to take responsibility in our relationships, it actually encourages our spouse, our partners to become vulnerable as well. It encourages our spouse and our partners to open up and be um, honest with us as well and show their own vulnerability and show their true authentic self. It really is a two-way street. So it's not that you are just doing this just because. You're doing this because you want to improve your relationship. This is a way for you to improve your relationship by just taking responsibility for your actions, for the things that you are actually doing, for the way that you are showing up in your relationship, for the things that are coming out of your mouth and you're not just putting the blame on your spouse, or I did this because you did that. I said this because you said that. Because at the end of the day, you really have to take responsibility, which is the whole thing that we're talking about today. You have to take responsibility for the way that you're showing up and the action that you have within your relationship. As I said the other day, at your very best, it's going to take practice, but at your very best, try to respond and not react. It actually shows us the unhealthy behaviors that we can work on, the areas that we can work on. And this specifically about taking responsibility is an area that most of us can work on. Uh, Keisha says, what happened when you're taking responsibility and the other person still has not? Nope. You can't worry about what the other person's not doing because you only have control over you. You only have control over you, sis. You cannot control what your partner is or is not doing. And here's the thing. If you continue, if you continue to show up and be the woman, the man that your partner really wants to see, at some point, that switch is going to click on and they will start to become a better spouse to be with. They will start to take responsibility. I'm not saying that this is going to happen overnight because a lot of times we don't think about the things that our spouses, that our partners, and the way that they grew up. The things that are deep-seated within them. And we, when we get into these relation, relationships, we want our partners to be a specific way. We want them to show up in a specific manner. That's not always the case. So as much as possible, just continue to have this open, honest dialogue. Continue to bring it to his attention. I know that it could be annoying. It could be annoying to have to always tell somebody to take responsibility. But that's what we have to do. We have to call each other on our crap. And that's the honest truth. We have to continue to call each other on our crap because if you don't call him on his crap and he don't call you on your crap, then y'all going to think that what y'all are doing is the correct way to build a healthy relationship, to, to, to improve on your relationship. And it's not. So unfortunately, Miss Keisha, <laughs> you cannot worry about what your spouse is not doing because if, if you start to think about it that way then what you're going to do is start to react to what he is not doing or how he is showing up then you're going to start going down a rabbit hole yourself hey Dakeisha I see so you don't want to um, <clears throat> respond the way your spouse is responding especially if it's in a negative manner because I'm telling you, y'all just going to keep going down the rabbit hole and that fight can turn into something crazy. Crazy. All because you decided to basically come down to his level and do the things and react the way that he is reacting. And I never said that this was going to be easy. As I mentioned before, yes, this is a 30-day challenge on how to improve your relationship. But really, sis, really, bruh? It's really a life challenge on how to keep your relationship healthy, how to improve on your relationship each and every day. If out of these 30 days, 
Say, for instance, you decided to come and you came back. I'm sorry, and you showed up and you started watching my videos at day 15. You still have 15 things that you can do to incorporate, to improve your life, to improve your relationship, to become a better person, to become a better spouse. So even if you decide to say, you know what? Ah, 30 is, 30, is too, 30 is way too much. You can take all of four, all of five, all of ten, and you still will improve your relationship. All 30 can seem like a lot to do, but it's really not. But if this is something that you are just getting a handle on, then 30 could seem like a lot. But, but mainly, these are the things that we already know. We just need to continue to practice them, practice them once again. Tisha, you don't, you do not react anymore and it's still a problem. It will be, it will be a problem. Try your very best to sit down and say, you know what, babe? Can we have a conversation as friends? Not as husband and wife or whatever stage you're in. Girlfriend, boyfriend, engagement, whatever. Whatever your titles are, right? Can we just sit down and have a conversation as friends? Take the relationship title off of it. You know what? When you speak to me this type of way, or specifically responsibility, excuse me. When you do not take responsibility for X action, it makes me feel this way. You notice how I didn't put the blame on him. I didn't say, I'm doing this because you're doing that. You're, what, you're, what you're simply doing is expressing the way that you feel and why you feel this way when he does not take responsibility for his actions. What you're trying to do is get him to think that there is a better way for you guys to create your relationship and constantly building on your relationship instead of the bickering going back and forth or even shutting down. Shutting down and walking away doesn't help the situation either. It might help it momentarily because you need to like go away and think. But overall, shutting down and walking away doesn't help either. So as much as possible, in your calm, in your sweetest voice that you can muster up, babe, can we have a um, conversation and let's just chit-chat as friends? The normal response is how or give me an example. So the next time he does it, the next time he is not taking responsibility, that is your opportunity to say, you know what, babe, you told me to point out or to give you a um, an example of how you're not taking responsibility. This is this is the case right now. In your sweetest, most just listen to me voice as you can muster up because it's going to be irritating. Like you're going to be annoyed. I'm not saying that when you get into that moment, it's going to be easy to be like, hey, babe, you know, you told me, but as much as possible, because you don't want to have an argument because it's still going to be continued as far as the non-responsibility. He's not going to take responsibility if you're coming at him in a harsh manner. But the next time he does X and he's not taking responsibility for how he's showing up and the actions and everything, that's when you can point it out right then and there. And don't wait because a lot of times we wait and then you can't think of an example in the moment when you start to complain about him not taking responsibility. So just keep it in the back of your mind. The next time he does not take responsibility, say, hey, babe, I know you wanted me to let you know or, or give you an example of how you don't take responsibility. This is it right here. And this this is this makes me feel this way. This is why I get a little bit annoyed or angry or whatever word you want to insert there. That way he gets to see the example right then and there. Because when you get heated and you walk away and then you try to think about the, what, what actually transpired, most of the time when we get into these arguments, we don't even realize what we're arguing about. We don't remember what we're arguing about. We just know we're mad at each other. And so just like he has to take responsibility for his actions and the way that he's showing up and what he's saying... You do as well, sis. You do as well. We can't make it one-sided, and we have a tendency to do that. We always think that we're doing everything right. That's not usually the case either. We all have some areas to work in. But taking responsibility is 
doesn't matter if you do not think it's getting through to him. It is. It might take a lot longer for him to verbalize things. But it's, it's getting to him. It's getting to him. Trust me, it is. So a few ways that you can, a um, few ways that what responsibility looks like. That's what I'm trying to say, okay? What responsibility look like? It's you becoming more self-aware. You, you yourself becoming more self-aware of what's happening, how you're feeling in the moment. If you can give examples specifically to Keisha, right? You being more self-aware. Another thing is you being able to apologize because we don't have to always be right. If you want to move that conversation on, move that argument on, just get rid of it. Just apologize. We don't always have to be right. And just because you apologize, it doesn't mean that you're wrong. It just means you're done. You're ready to move that on. It's not as important as having a good relationship with your spouse. Or is it? Because if I'm apologizing, that doesn't always mean that I'm wrong. It's just, you know, I'm, th this conversation that we're having right now, this argument that's going downhill, it's not that serious for me. And so because it's not that serious for me, I could just apologize and move on. Or tell you, you know what, babe? Guess what? I, we we going to have to agree to disagree because I, I don't agree with you. But that's okay. You are entitled to your opinion just like I'm entitled to my opinion. And we're not going to agree on this thing. So we could just move on with life. That's pretty much the way that I handle um, that I handle things, period. Because we know we both are not going to be right all the time. And also, we could, because we um, communicate a little bit differently, we could be saying the exact same thing in different ways. And because we both need to say X, we're not really listening to the other person, right? So you're not really listening to the other person. And then when one of y'all actually stops to listen then you'll actually hear, we're actually saying the same thing. We might be saying it differently, but we're saying the same thing. We're using different words to express the exact same thing. So being self-aware, being able to apologize, and then this will also um, affect the way that your spouse is showing up as well, as I mentioned before. Because you're being more self-aware, you're actually thinking before you're speaking. Keisha says, stop trying to control your spouse and accept when y'all just don't agree. It's okay. Absolutely. It really is. You do not have, you, and it's real unrealistic to believe that you're always going to agree with your spouse because you're not, because y'all two different people with two different backgrounds. And even if they're similar backgrounds, there's still something about y'all relationship, y'all, y'all, um, environment that you grew up in that was different. And so you're not going to see everything on the same page. And that's okay. You want somebody that's going to give you a run for your money. Because <laughs> if, true, listen, listen. If you always had a person that was a yes man or a yes woman, would you really want to be a part of that relationship long term? No, because it's going to get boring. You want somebody that's going to give you a little bit of a challenge here and there. And then what, do they even have a mind if they're always agreeing with you, if you're always agreeing with them? You have to learn to just speak up for yourself. Take responsibility how you're showing up. Take responsibility for your actions. Take responsibility for the words that come out of your mouth. Take responsibility that you just wanted to cut him, that you just wanted to cut her with your words. Yeah, it don't, it don't sound pretty coming from somebody else on the other side. It don't sound pretty. It actually sounds pretty petty. But we get petty. Don't we? We get petty. It's not just me. We get petty sometimes. Because we, <laughs> we actually lose control. Because we want the other person to see where we're coming from. We want the other person just to agree. How come you can't see it my way? It just doesn't always work out that way. But it's okay. It really is truly okay when it doesn't work out where you both are agreeing on every single solitary thing. Because again, it's going to be super boring in your relationship. Lastly, 
you will be holding yourself accountable for your own actions. Yep. Think about that. When you're taking responsibility, you are holding yourself accountable for your own actions. That makes a hell of a difference in your relationship. And it truly does not matter. It don't. It don't matter if your spouse is going down a rabbit hole. Because here's the thing. They can only go down a rabbit hole by themselves. They can only go down a rabbit hole so far if you just stop. If you just stop and get silent and then let them have their little tantrum, only go down the rabbit hole so far. And your spouse, just as much as you, just as much as me, we all have to be big girls and big boys and learn to take responsibility for how we're showing up on a daily basis in our relationships with our spouse everywhere. Watching our tongue. This this thing can give somebody a tongue lashing. This thing can really make people harm themselves. Literally. Like trying to commit suicide. Literally trying to harm themselves. We really have to watch our tongue. We really have to take responsibility for who we are and how we're showing up. Because really, how are you showing up to yourself first? Do you feel good about yourself when you start going down a rabbit hole and y'all start going back and forth and then you start spewing all of this mean stuff to each other? Do you feel good about your relationship? Do you feel good about your spouse? Do you feel good about yourself? Not usually. Unless you're just pretty cold-hearted, not usually. You usually have that shame and guilt later on. But you don't have to have any of that if you just don't do it. If you just stop and think before you speak. But so many of us are out here, we, we, we got to prove our point. We got to let you know, you're not going to get me. I done got got before. Nobody's going to get me again like they got me before. All of that's hurting your relationship. All of that is hurting your relationship. This is day 28, y'all. We have to learn to take responsibility for our actions. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys here tomorrow for day 29. We're almost there. Day 29 tomorrow of the 38 challenge on how to improve your relationship by 3x. And really, you really can prove and improve your relationship by 5 to 10x if you did all 30 things. But I get it. It could be overwhelming for some of you. So take the 3 to 5 things and start to implement them into your relationship. And guess what? Your relationship will be improved. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day. Deuces.